we've seen so far in 2020 has been a real surprise. I mean, no one expected COVID-19 pandemic to cause such a real wide range of damage across the whole of the oil infrastructure, pricing, demand, supply, the whole area, really. I mean, firstly, if we look at the price, which is the most important thing, uh, we've fallen 40 percent from where we were at the start of the year. Bear in mind, though, we had did we have a recovery. We were around $20 a barrel, uh, sort of mid-Feb. Since then, we staged a bit of a recovery as, as actual economy started to reopen, etc. Uh, and we're now trading at around the $42 barrel. But now, of course, we've got a lot more concerns about second waves uh, of lockdowns happening, not just in the UK, but globally. Um, so that's also now we've got prospects for prices falling further. But if you look at some of the other underlying uh, numbers there in terms of production demand, you can see some really interesting statistics. So looking at the rig count, that's down 73% uh, year to date. We're now at 179 rigs. The last time we saw this level was sort of post-2012. So that's also a big surprise. No one expected the rig count to, to fall so low. And the actual rebound we've seen the last couple of days isn't really in line with the sort of rebound in price. Looking at uh, U.S. supply as well, that's down about 20% uh, this year. U.S. supply actually had risen uh, to around 13 million barrels and at one point the world's largest supplier. But the subsequent developments uh, around the COVID-19 pandemic have seen that fall as well. OPEC supply, we've had the OPEC cuts, of course, but they've fallen by around 10%. Uh, year on year. So that, again, we didn't expect such falls in OPEC supply. And now they're talking about perhaps even cutting supply further or having stricter compliance on existing production cuts. Then we look at demand. Demand this year now is forecast to fall uh, by 9 million barrels a day from last year. And that was the most recent uh, forecast. But I think now what's happening over the recent few days and what we might see moving forward we're going to see further falls in demand over the coming months. We're seeing changes in the way we live. There's less people now going into the office, less people using public transport. So that's having a profound effect. And I think what we're going to see as we head into the winter uh, is an even more uh, profound effect. And fast forward six months or seven months, would we'll be interesting to see where we are then and maybe revisit some of these numbers. But Judging by what we're looking at, looking internally at our forecasts and looking at production and supply and the whole global picture, uh, the outlook is quite dismal at the moment. Chinese demand is uh, also going to be very important. Now, if you look at China, everyone was expecting their economy to recover the quickest. They came out of the pandemic early, so you would expect economically they're going to be on a faster track of recovery. However, recent numbers, however promising, they're also worrying now about overseas demand and with overseas demand falling then Chinese internal production etc will also start to fall. Let's not forget as well we've got the US elections coming. We've also still got some concerns around trade wars and I think volatility around these again could have a, a profound effect and if we do see Chinese demand um, start to slip then we're really going to start to worry because I think the oversupply will deepen and we may need to cut supply from other sources. Perhaps even OPEC might even look to cut even further. So that is, yeah, the big concern is around these US elections and any or any escalation in these trade wars.